Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and so for today's video we have a lot to cover so I want to start off the video by talking about all of the books that I read in the month of December, my thoughts and feelings on them, if I liked them, if I didn't like them, and then at the end of the video I want to talk about my future January to be read list so I want to talk about all the books that I plan on reading in the month of January. So. If you guys are interested, then just go ahead and keep on watching. So December was a little bit of a slower month for me. I did a lot of traveling, I was working a lot, and then just like with the holidays, I just feel like I didn't read as much as I would have liked to, but I did read a couple of good books, so I did want to talk about them with you guys. So the first book that I read in December was called When in Rome, and it's by Sarah Adams, and I heard a lot of great reviews on this book. I ended up rating it a 4 out of 5 stars, so this book is about a girl named Amelia Rose, who is known as Ray Rose to her adoring fans, and... She is burned out from the years of maintaining her princess of pop image and then inspired by her favorite Audrey Hepburn film, Roman Holiday, she drives off in the middle of the night for a break in Rome, Kentucky. So she lives in Nashville, which I don't know, I feel like any time a book or like a movie references something that like I lived in or like I visited, I just like get so giddy. I don't know why, but for those of you guys who don't know, I lived in Nashville for six years and so the fact that... The main character in this book like lived in Nashville. I don't know. I just like really liked it right off the bat. So she drives from Nashville to Rome, Kentucky and then in Rome she meets Noah Walker who just is like a complete opposite of Amelia. Like he doesn't have like a phone. He doesn't have Wi-Fi. He lives in a very small tiny town. He runs a pie shop. Like literally the complete opposite of Amelia and so they get to know each other. So basically this book is just about Amelia and Noah's relationship. I feel like it's a really good like feel good like kind of happy book. It does have like that small town romance feel to it. I did give it a four out of five stars because ultimately I just feel like I'm over that trope of like two characters saying like oh I really like you but like we can't be together. So like they do everything in their power to like not catch feelings or to not kiss like to not do anything and I just feel like I'm so over that trope because like if that connection is real and you guys both like each other why are you trying to like end it and like not even give it a chance. I don't know I feel like I'm all about chances and I just realized that I just don't like that specific trope anymore. I just feel like it's overdone and I don't know, I just don't like it, so that's ultimately the reason why I did give this book a 4 out of 5 stars, and for whatever reason, this book took me, like, forever to finish, to get through, and it's a really short book, it's literally, like, 302 pages, but for whatever reason, I think this took me, like, 4 or 5 days to read, which says a lot, because normally, if a book is, like, super short, it takes me, like, 2 days to read, um, or like a day and a half, but this one took me forever to read, but I don't know. I still would recommend it. I still did really like it. I just don't love the trope that it had, but I still did really like it, and I do want to read more of Sarah Adams' books because, like I said, I did enjoy it. I did give it a four to five stars. Um, it just wasn't like my all-time like favorite, but I still did really like it and enjoy it. The next book that I read was called Once Upon a December, and this is by Amy... Reichert, I think that's how you pronounce her name, and I rated this a 3 out of 5 stars. I liked it, but I didn't, like, love it. So, basically, this book is obviously a romance book, and it's fiction, but it has, like, that element of magical realism in it, which is just not my favorite. I, ever since I was little and, like, growing up, I never gravitated towards like cartoons or like animation or like fantasy or like anything that was like fake like the books that I want to read and like the shows that I want to watch the movies that I want to watch I want them to all be like real and like can happen where when you kind of get this sense of like magic and stuff like that I just don't always love that I'm always willing to give it a chance because the next book that I'm going to talk about is like a little magical realism in it but I thoroughly enjoyed that book where this one I just felt like the magic played too much in to uh, the book and that's my own doing because I read the back of the book and I should have known better <laughs> but I just kind of breezed the back of the book. I got this during Black Friday at Barnes & Noble. It's about a girl named Ostra and she is going to her yearly trip to the Milwaukee Christmas Market and this is after she has just gotten a divorce and so she meets this handsome stranger who saves the best Kringle for her at his family bakery and so she meets a guy named Jack 
and they're in the jewel mark jewel marked I think is everyone else yes so they're in the jewel marked and they meet but the thing about the jewel marked is that it's like this magical place that like no one like really ages there's no crime like it's like the perfect little place it's Christmas all the time like they go from like December 1st to like December 25th every single day so it's like always a day in December and then they're always like traveling to different Christmas markets like throughout the United States or throughout the world because they're also in like different countries so basically Jack and Ostra meet and then they have to decide like okay what are we gonna do about this can our is our relationship like deep enough and like good enough to make it like outside of the Christmas market basically so the plot was good like I did enjoy the characters like I did like it it just was a little too like magic-y for me I don't know I just like didn't love it so that's why I gave it a three out of five stars if that's something that you're interested in then I would 100% recommend this book like I said I still would recommend it because I know everyone has different opinions everyone likes different stuff but for me I just feel like the more like fantasy magic stuff is just not always my thing but I'm always willing to give it a try because like I said the next book that I'm going to talk about I loved and that had like the magical realism in it but overall I liked this book it just wasn't my favorite it was like a very cute little sweet Christmas read and I definitely really wanted to know like what would happen at the end like what they were going to end up doing as characters whether they were going to like try to figure this out and date or if they were just going to like end it I was so curious to know what was going to happen so I did really like the ending I didn't think it was like too cheesy I know a lot of Christmas books can be like so cheesy but this one I don't think like was too cheesy like it could have been but like I don't know I did really like the ending I just didn't love like that magical aspect to it so yeah that's ultimately why I gave it a three out of five stars and then the last book that I read in December I loved this book so much so it's called in five years and it's by Rebecca Searle I think that's how you pronounce it if you guys don't know I just like don't know how to pronounce anyone's um name I feel like every time I like announce an author I'm like I don't know how to pronounce it but but yeah so I read in five years and can we just take a moment to appreciate this cover like it is so beautiful like I just love the colors the bridge I just I love it so I actually saw this book back in the summertime when I was going book shopping I read the back of it and I was like oh like I don't know like it's not like it couldn't really happen in real life so I kind of like put it back and then I saw someone online read this book and she really hyped it up so I was like okay you know what let me give it another shot and so I put it on my Christmas list and my mom gave it to me for Christmas and I read this I think in like a day and a half. It was so good. So this is what it's about. It's about a girl named Danny and she has like her dream job interview and then she just accepts her boyfriend's proposal and then she falls asleep but when she awakens she's suddenly in a different apartment with a different ring on her finger and besides a very different man. So Danny spends exactly one hour, five years in the future before she wakes again in her own home at the brink of midnight. So basically she saw like into the future so I was a little skeptical going into this book because I had just finished um the once upon a December so I was a little skeptical but I really really enjoyed it it takes place in New York which I love books that take place in New York I just love New York City and I was reading it so basically she doesn't want that future so she goes throughout her life the next five years trying to figure out okay what am I going to do to like not create that future to happen and so I think because it wasn't like the whole book wasn't centered around like this like magical thing I think that's why I enjoyed it more where like once upon a December like the whole book was basically about this like magical place in the jewel marked so I think that's why I didn't love it where in this book you just have like a quick she sees five minutes in the future and then like she occasionally talks about it throughout the book but it's not like the whole base of the book if that makes any sense and so I think that's why I personally really enjoyed this book like I said I gave it five out of five stars I really enjoyed it and if you guys have not read it you definitely should I'm pretty sure she has another book I think it's called like one Italian summer that I am interested to read again it has like that magical realism aspect to it but since I really enjoyed this book I want to give that one a chance and I've heard really great reviews on it so yeah that was in five years really liked it really enjoyed it and then moving on we have the books that I plan to read in January so I have three books right here which oh gosh which I feel like I will probably get through them 
quickly because I just read so quickly and I'm trying to not read as fast as I used to just because reading <laughs> is a very expensive hobby and I can't just like afford to buy like 10 books every month so I need to work on like not reading so fast but when a book is so good I just like simply cannot put it down but anyways besides the point I probably will end up having to do another book haul towards the end of this month because this just simply will not cut it for me because these are all the books that I own that I haven't read yet so anyways let's get into it so the first book is Elin Hildebrand and this is her book called Winter in Paradise and I've heard so many great reviews on this this is a series this is book one of three and so this is about a girl named Irene and she's married to her husband they have kids and then everything falls to pieces with a single phone call her beloved husband away on business has been killed in a plane crash and so he was killed in the Caribbean and so Irene and her sons arrive at the Caribbean and they find out another shocking discovery her husband has been living a double life so they're trying to figure out okay what was my husband like like what was all of his secrets like what was he doing here in the Caribbean like what was his work all of that type of stuff so I've heard like I said I've heard really great reviews about this and I definitely want to read more of like Elin's books because I really like her as an author and I also just really like her as a person I've heard so many great things about her just like as a human being and so I'm really excited to read this and just read more of her books in general so yeah that's the first book that I'll be reading this month and then up next we have The Perfect Marriage and this is by Geneva oh my gosh Geneva Rose I think and again I have heard so many amazing things about this book so I'm really excited to read it so it says Sarah Morgan is a successful and powerful defense attorney in Washington DC and then her husband is kind of the opposite he is a struggling writer who has had little success in his career so Adam and Sarah have a second home and Adam starts to engage in a passionate affair with Kelly Summers and then one morning everything changes Adam is arrested for Kelly's murder because she has been found stabbed to death in Adam and Sarah's second home so Sarah now finds herself playing the defender for her own husband a man accused of murdering his mistress is Adam guilty or is he innocent and it just sounds so good and like I said I've heard so many people rave about this book so I think it'll be really good and my sister gave this to me for Christmas so thank you so much to her but yeah that'll be the second book that I plan on reading in January and then the last book that I have is another Elin Hildebrand book I got this I think during Black Friday sales so this is called Golden Girl and again I don't know what it is with me reading like not fully reading books and like understanding what they're about um because like I said I know what I like and I don't know this will be interesting to see if I like this book um, so this one, it says, on a perfect June day, Vivian Howe is killed in a hit-and-run accident while jogging near her home on Nantucket, so she ascends to the beyond when she's assigned to a person named Martha, who allows Vivian to watch what happens below for one last summer, and she's granted three nudges to change the outcome of events on Earth. So again, something that's like not really real, like this can't really happen, but I still think it'll be a good book because... Like I said about like the Winter in Paradise series, I've just heard so many great things about Elin's books and so again I really want to read more of them. She's a similar author to Colleen Hoover where I really enjoy their writing and I want to continue to like read all the books that they have and kind of just like pick my favorites just like for fun, you know, just to see like which books that they have written that I really enjoy. So yeah. We have Golden Girl. That is the last book that I plan on reading in January. Like I said, I probably will get through these books pretty quickly. So I probably will have to go to the store or place an order online for some more books. But as of now, that is my January to be read list. So that wraps up this video. Those are all the books that I read in December as well as the books that I plan on to read in January. I'm sorry this video is coming out a little bit later than I would have liked but I still wanted to get this video up and out for you guys so yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you guys like the book content make sure to follow me I do have a book Instagram that I post a lot of book related content on and then also my TikTok. I'm starting to incorporate more like book related videos so if you guys like the book content definitely go over on TikTok and Instagram to follow me I really hope you guys enjoyed this video Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in my next video.